Ooh, it's it's muddy here. That's that's not your average place to ride. But anyways, welcome everyone. My name is Michael. Uh, that's the most beautiful, my first dual motor, uh, probably the most unbreakable and durable urban electric scooter, which is at the same time probably the most expensive one I've ever tested. Yonagi Model 1. Okay, let's get back to business. Uh, this is the Model 1 and disclaimer, this scooter has been sent to me by Yonagi for testing and a feedback session, but in no way my review is impacted by them. I'm already two weeks on this thing. Um, 120 plus kilometers, maybe by the time you watching this video is gonna be multiplied by more because my intention is to keep on riding this. Um, and it's different. Like, uh, you probably have heard about the Xiaomi M365, which is the scooter that made electric scooters more affordable and made them a common thing. Well, uh, probably we can compare this component by component, but it wouldn't be fair because you would see a lot of things are done in different way. Although, on the outside, they kind of look alike. Uh, of course, the design is different, but you can see that the main components are similar. Certainly, a lot of decisions which defer this Yonagi scooter from anything else on the market, uh, called Model 1. And maybe those of you who are into electric vehicles, you would immediately think of Tesla. And maybe I can call it the Tesla of the electric scooters, but we'll, we'll talk about that. When reviewing tech, I usually start talking about the price first, but we're gonna leave the discussion about the price at the end because I wanna show you most of the technologies used so that you can make an assessment whether the price is justified or not. The big thing that struck me when I was looking on Yonagi's website is that uh, you can buy the scooter, ride it for 30 days, and then simply return it. And they're gonna give you your money back. No questions asked. Now, uh, if a company is so certain about the qualities of this product, because obviously their expectation is that nobody would return it, I think that says enough about its qualities. You can guess by the unboxing that we talk about something which is designed with attention to the smallest detail and it's very user-friendly setup. Very straightforward process. Essentially, the handlebar is being shipped detached in order for transportation to be easier. One note, when you're doing the installation, I once had the cable detached. Looks like the connector just flipped out. Yonagi have been informed. Not sure what kind of actions they will take in order to change the manufacturing process, but it was more like a sequence of events. One of the hottest days of the year, very bumpy road, and while I was jumping over one of these bumps, it all stopped. Let's explore the design and the materials being used. This tube over here, which is, first of all, good looking. Second of all, I think it's unbreakable. It's made out of carbon fiber. The same kind of material as it is used in Elon Musk's SpaceX project. And that's according to Yonagi's website. The handlebar is magnesium with the most brilliant design ever. Controls are easy to get used to. I focus now on the build quality. A lot of scooters are criticized for that. The Unagi Moto can only be praised. Look at the tube. Look at the paintwork. Well, I, I found some imperfections, but the stand is great. I found that the wider front side protects you well if it is raining. And it has the easiest to use ever folding mechanism. There is one slight disadvantage, and this is this backlash, if you can notice. It's, it's barely visible, but if you look here, you're going to see that. It's very much like the M365 after 100 kilometers. Uh, difference is that with the M365, it happens because of the not so great materials. And over here, wow, is it gonna rain? I don't know, probably not. Uh, <laughs> over here, the difference is that it is by design. On one side, this kind of backlash absorbs part of the vibrations, and on the other side, they can't make it better because it's just the way this mechanism is designed. Let's move on with the story about the motors, the wheelbase, and the tires. And I'm coming closer, you can notice a lot of mud. This scooter is not great to ride at uh, muddy places. It's, it's bad for everything. These 
tires, they are solid tires. And uh, you can probably see these little airbags, which make the riding experience much smoother than what it would be with an average solid tire. If there was such a model for the M365 scooter, that was the first thing I was gonna buy. Concerning the wheelbase 705 inch and this model is the dual motor variation of the Unagi Model 1. There is a single motor version and this single motor is in the rear wheel, okay? With the dual motor version, you've got two modes. First mode is riding with just one motor active and then you have the sports mode where both motors are active. With just a single motor, the incline capabilities are up to 6%, with two motors up to 15%. Now, um, every manufacturer measures this in a different way. The 6% by Yunaki is very close to the capabilities of the M365, which according to the documentation is capable of climbing up to 14 uphills. So you can see the truth is somewhere in the middle. I'll speak with numbers. Uh, with a single motor, 16 newton meters, with dual motor up to 28, which is, <laughs> which is like this, um, insane modes of the Tesla devices, well, you can't go up to 100 kilometers per hour because here the limit is 25, but certainly it's, it's really fast. It's so much faster than single motor scooters that it's unbelievable. And probably that's the main reason I'm coming back again and again to using this scooter is because the acceleration from zero to 25 or respectively from zero up until 15.6 miles per hour is unbelievably quick. It would be good to mention about the three gears. The first one is 9 miles per hour, which is close to 15 kilometers per hour. Standard mode is 12.4 miles per hour or 20 kilometers per hour. And the sports mode is capped at 15.5 miles per hour, which is respectively around 25 kilometers per hour. In my opinion, this is the scooter with the best tuned gears in terms of speed. Um, it's not too slow, it's not too quick, according to the regulations in more countries. So um, it's really fun to ride. There's one thing which probably would concern people who, who commute for a longer time per day. And probably this is one of the, I, I think it's the only criticism I have for the United scooter. There is no cruise control. It was a kind of making me nervous at the start, but now I'm, I'm really used to that. It's, it's not a deal breaker, but it would have been nice if, if there was a cruise control. Moving on to the handlebar and the buttons. I mentioned the three gears. Here's how to switch them. There's a small button right above the throttle. Double click to go between first, second and third. Single click is switching between total mileage and the trip mileage. The throttle is really easy to use. On the other side, we have the horn. It's so loud that it can be used for educational purposes with impolite pedestrians taking a walk on the bike lanes. And here's the brake. Anti-lock brakes, sort of ABS system integrated. Both the accelerator and the brakes have variability built into the controls. So pushing down further increases their action. You can check about the braking efficiency. This often is the most important component about safety. Note that the brakes are actually consuming electricity, meaning that if the power is, is going down, if it's close to zero, then your braking efficiency is going to decline. Therefore, on the rear side, we have this mud guard, which is flexible and you can use for um, emergency braking. Just, just be careful. Huh? Time to talk about my favorite topic, which is the range. Now, before I tell you about the values, which have been based on testing, uh, 90 kilogram is what I weigh. And I like the sport kind of riding, but for the testing, I've tried to be extra patient. Now, a few things to remember. First of all, uh, this is a dual motor scooter. So it has two motors, meaning that usually two motors consume a bit more electricity than just a single motor. Secondly, this, uh, this scooter has no feature which is regenerating energy when it goes downhills like other motors do. It has no curse, kinetic energy um, recovery system, which generates a little bit of recovery of uh, electricity when, when you're braking. 
Uh, so also when you're braking, it does consume electricity. Now the tests I have conducted, mostly flat area, there was some inclines which were less than 3-4%, so it was really flat. Um, and I've started with the second gear, which is the standard mode, and um, just a single motor mode, which has given me around 15 kilometers of range. According to Yunagi, uh, this scooter has up to 25 kilometers in terms of range, which is how much? Uh, 15, 16 miles. Now, what really surprised me was when I switched to the dual motor setup because I was riding the same way, exactly the same way, same conditions, the same battery temperature, everything. So the mileage I achieved was again 15 kilometers. Actually, it was um, probably a few hundred meters better than with the single motor, which kind of stunned me. Like uh, everybody would expect with a single motor you to get better range, but no, no, that's not the case here. Reasons are a few. First of all, when one of the motors is disabled, well, it's, it's not like you're having a normal wheel. It's, it brings additional weight and resistance, which obviously impacts the rear motor. Secondly, I weigh 90 kilos, which is the limit for the single motor version. So I guess I'm too heavy for just a single motor operation. Second, and maybe thirdly already, when you have two wheels which are accelerating, uh, they don't usually reach the peak power because they, uh, w w when two people do the same job, you know, it's, it's going to be much faster than one person doing it. So it's a kind of normal. Therefore, um, I find a very minor difference between single motor and dual motor mode in terms of range and also in terms of battery consumption. Uh, this thing is like a Swiss clock. Uh, every three kilometers, it was getting one bar lower from the battery percentage. It was extremely accurate. Of course, people with different way, they, they, would, they would get different achievements. That's certainly the case. On the sports modes, I hardly go beyond 12 kilometers, which is around seven miles, maybe eight miles in the best case. If I go to the echo mode, I think I can manage 22 plus kilometers if I'm really cautious, but then riding is not really fun. If you, if you switch to the third gear, do motor operation, then when you go back to echo mode, it feels like, <laughs> it feels like you're not moving at all. We count on LG battery with capacity of 281 watt hours. The same as those on the M365, but we have to be fair, the Yunagi scooter feels much more powerful and thanks to the two motors, it has more power even than the M365 Pro with obviously shorter range. Above all, Yunagi is about craftsmanship. The fabulous design, the awesome colors, the easiness when braking, the powerful motors, the innovative maintenance-free tires, and that awesome folding mechanism. And you're gonna notice some more little things. The lights, front lights, which is the best I've seen on a scooter till now. The rear light, which is on all the time. Waterproof protection for the wires, even below the mud guard. No Bluetooth and therefore no smartphone app. And the most significant shortcoming, the lack of cruise control, which I definitely miss. Um, in terms of price, you gotta pay $840 for the single motor variation, $990 for the dual motor. I think it's a little expensive, but in my opinion, well justified. From the months I've been working closely with Narsin, that's another kind of scooter, I've learned a lot about the difference in materials and especially the difference in price when it comes to materials, uh, money that you spend in R&D and uh, all that stuff. And don't forget that Yunagi is a small company. They don't have this access to cool discounts that factories make for large orders and so on. But I sincerely wish a lot of luck to this team because it's, it's probably the best designed scooter ever. You just buy it and you don't have to maintain it, like uh, maintenance-free tires, the best folding mechanism in the world, which doesn't really need any explanation how it works, quite obviously. Uh, ABS system, uh, very precise braking, awesome acceleration, and the most powerful thing I've ever 
uh, ridden in, in this price segment, that's the model one. But to me, it's more important what do you think. So please comment. Do you think this Yunagi Model 1 is worth 990? And um, what do you think of the colors and the construction? Let me know. Comments below. My name is Michael, this is Tech for Road channel, and I'm so much looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye.